Hello everybody and welcome back to Chaos Head. Um, from a quick Google search for uh, how many chapters there are in this game, it looks like there's 10 from what I could tell. Sadly, none of the results I found like specifically mentioned uh, how many chapters there are, but it looks like it's probably around 10, maybe 11. Um, but so we are actually relatively quickly uh, approaching the end of this series um, because we're in seven right now and I want to say each chapter goes for anywhere from four to six parts I want to say so yeah we'll be finishing this sometime in probably mid-2022 potentially mid late depending upon uh, exactly how long each chapter is because I don't think they're all necessarily the same length but yeah so we are, like I said, potentially uh, fairly quickly approaching the end of this series. Uh, relatively speaking, of course. Another investigation meeting was convened in the Shibuya Police Department's conference room today. All of the detectives were exhausted and looked exasperated at the thought of how many hours this fruitless meeting might continue. And when Matsunaga began listening to the individual investigators' reports, Ban unexpectedly raised his hand and gingerly stood up. <laughs> Not only Matsunaga, but the other detectives and also Sua, who had been sitting beside Ban, listened to him with dubious expressions. Wearing his usual frivolous and friendly smile, Ban gave them a quick bow with his head, then looked around. <laughs> いわゆる集団ダイブの映像についてなんですが、実はちょっとした発見をしまして… Wasn't the group diving the first? I, I, I could have sworn that was the first case. Was that really just uploaded a few… Actually, yeah, now that I think about it, never mind. Yes, it was. It, it was not uploaded until some way through this game and we were on the third case already at the time so okay never mind yeah, never mind i uh, i was about to say something that was actually incorrect eh sua wore a face of blatant surprise it was expected because ban had investigated the film without saying a single world eh, a single word about it to sua who he was supposed to have paired up with then again, the reason for it wasn't that he'd wanted to keep it secret from Sua, but rather... Because maybe there's info in the group diving one that provides info for the stake investigation? I feel like that's an obvious response. Well, that was pretty much what it came down to. Ban had taken independent action, ignoring instructions from headquarters, and if he got Sua involved in it, a young detective with a bright future ahead of him would get tied down by his superiors. He'd avoided that. <laughs> Laughing foolishly, Ban took two elongated photos from a file close at hand. He stuck them to the blackboard with magnets. <laughs> I'm just going to go out on a limb that one video or one picture is from the video while the other is from him himself going to the rooftop of Cornelius Tower and taking a picture of what is presumably supposed to be the exact same skyline which it looks like it is except there's one giant glaring thing missing this random skyscraper okay the right photo is apparently from the video and of course presumably this a case did not occur so far back that it was possible to erect a skyscraper in the distance. Oh, I forgot to actually get my timer going. Whoops. Go ahead and do that. This part will go a little long then. 
His demeanor, full of insinuations, Ban slowly surveyed the large conference room before finally looking straight at Matsunaga. Apparently, Matsunaga is not capable of thinking for himself well enough. Next to Ban, Sue kept craning his neck. Nor did the other detectives make any effort to hide their confusion. Why the fuck are they confused? Literally look at the picture, there's something missing. で、コーネリアスタワーの東。つまり六本木方面ですね。東京タワーが夜景の中にしっかり映ってる。赤いから目立ちますね。でもね、もう一つよく目立つものが映ってないんですよ。Uh, I just want to note that I can't really see Tokyo Tower in either of these. よく目立つもの? Yes, people, you know, use your eyes, you have them for a reason. Eyes narrowed, stroking the scraps of beard on his jaw with his hand, Ban put a self deprecating or put on a self deprecating smile. Doppongi Bills desu yo. Ah! The conference room burst into commotion. Indeed, one couldn't see the light of Rapongi Bills, or of the Rapongi Bills building in the photo taken from the uploaded video. The photo Ban had snapped yesterday, on the other hand, had clearly captured both Tokyo Tower and the lightened windows of Roppongi Bills. And again, I can't really see Tokyo Tower. I, I don't see it in these pictures. Like, at all. I don't see anything that clearly looks like what Tokyo Tower looks like. で、たまたま見つけたんですが、コーネリアスタワーのホテルロビーにタワー完成当時のパネルが展示してありましてね。Van took a new photo out of a file and stuck the two photos next to each other. It too was a picture of the Roppongi view from the roof of the tower, but it was a daytime photograph, not a night one. The rumble in the conference room swelled. Matsunaga fell silent and regarded the photos sternly. 2001年。六本木ビルズの完成は2003年。タワー完成当時の写真ではだが集団ライブが起きたのは今年。Okay, this As I was about to say because uh, I thought he was done talking. Okay, this game takes place in 2008. I knew it was sort of around that time, I just couldn't quite recall the exact date. As though losing his patience, Matsunaga urged him on in a grumpy sounding voice. <sighs> Ben's shoulders dropped, crestfallen. The Sue had said exactly what he'd meant to imply, and he admired this young detective's mental sharpness and discernment, but when he stated it straight up like that, it couldn't help but seem much more sketchy. Van's prudence about whether or not to say it had returned to the earth, ashes to ashes and dust to dust. バカバカしい。小説の読みすぎではないがね。映像に映っている被害者5人の顔は一致しているんだ。あれが5年前のものの
今のは聞かなかったことにするそれと後で話があるから会議が終わったら残りたまえ Ban let out a small sigh, gave up, and sat down. Well, it wasn't like he thought anyone would believe him. Lethargically waving his fan at himself, he inwardly muttered sour grapes. That said, Ban himself hadn't determined the answer to why the video didn't show Rapongi Bills. After I found out that Nanami was alive, a doctor came to me and asked me a number of simple questions. There were questions to determine whether or not my condition was back to normal. As I answered half heartedly, I made the decision to leave the hospital before my mom arrived. How could I possibly face my family after having been shamed in front of the whole nation? But besides, if Nanami came, I was positive I'd be overjoyed and start bawling. And without any idea of how I felt, Nanami would yell at me straight face, saying, Don't make me worry so much, you moron. When I envisioned that scene, I almost fainted from embarrassment. As a result, I decided to beat a strategic retreat before I fell into such a situation. After nibbling a little bit of the horrible breakfast they gave me, I fruitively left the hospital room. Or fervently, rather. What? Yeah, I have no idea how that will get fruitively. <laughs> I descended to the first floor and crossed the lobby. Since the hospital hadn't opened yet, the lobby, which was normally bulging at the seams with old people, was now quiet and still. I managed to breeze out through the front entrance. Fortunately, the automatic doors opened properly for me. The nurses and phys physicians might get angry at me for slipping out of the hospital on my own, but all I had to do was avoid going back there until things cooled down. There shouldn't be any issues with the hospitalization fee since I'd left a note for my mom with, please pay them later. Though I'd spent the night at the hospital, I felt physically fine, and psychologically, knowing that Nanami was okay, had made my gloom lessen considerably. Proceeding with great care, in case Shogun and Yua were lying in wait for me along the way, I hastened back to my base. <sighs> I'd come back. My emotional state was utterly different from when I'd left here last night. Of course, now I felt refreshed. In fact, I wanted to say a word or two to yesterday's self. You take the bait too easily. Nanami's gonna be okay even without you freaking out like that, lol. <laughs> that kind of thing. But yesterday had been really tough. Anything and everything had been tough. In the morning, there was that weird phone call, an earthquake took place. My hard disk data had got cleared, I had been forced to witness ISA's failed suicide attempt. Shogun had emailed me. He'd sent me a severed hand. A severed hand. My hyper mood drained away in an instant. I swallowed jerkily and cast my line of sight at the fridge. That hand was in there. Yesterday, before leaving here, after considering what to do about it, with my discombobbled mind, I'd stuck the hand in the fridge for the time being. If I left it hanging around outside, it might rot and the smell of blood would lie thick. Sci-fi anime and movies often use the premise that people can remain in a state of apparent death for hundreds of years, as long as you keep them frozen in storage. In a word, I'd landed on the same sort of idea. Yesterday, I'd honestly thought that once Nanami was safe, if her hand was preserved with even a little of its former freshness, maybe they could surgically reattach it. If it weren't Nanami's hand, whose could it be? And how was I supposed to account for the cell phone and the bangle? Unless my eyes are mistaken, those definitely belong to Nanami. When I called her, it had connected me to the cell phone in the hand's grip. Or else, everything, those parts included, was part of the trap Shogun had laid for me. Was it really possible to so perfectly replicate Nanami's arm? Although I seriously didn't want to. A human hand? Disgusting. Recalling it nearly made me throw up, even if it were Nanami's. But simply because of that, I couldn't let it stay in my fridge for who knew how long. At this rate, I wouldn't be able to chill my coke either. For a second, I thought of giving it to the police. But on second thought, they suspected me of being the new gen perpetrator. Under those circumstances, it'd be suicidal to call 110 and tell them, please take a severed hand from me. What should I do? Maybe I'd all throw it away. But I felt like it'd be bad to chuck it if it were Nanami's arm, hypothetically speaking. 
for starters, was it okay to throw a human hand in the garbage? If you were going to, did it belong with burnable garbage? Unburnable garbage? I scratched my head. Nothing would come of pondering it. For now, I should take a more careful look at the bracelet the hand was wearing and the cell phone it held. To see whether they were anomies or not. I stood in front of the fridge and gripped its handle. I closed my eyes and took two or three deep breaths. I was tempted to call Remy and have her examine it in my place, but I soon chased away that temptation. Remy might be my ally, but finding a human hand in my fridge would make anyone pull back. If I screwed up, she might grow wary of me and send me to the police. My only option was to do something about it myself. <laughs> I grit my teeth, I took another two deep breaths, and, my mind made up, I pulled the handle. And it's not there. Gone. I didn't spot it anywhere. The hand that I definitely put in here yesterday, a hand wrapped in aluminum foil, I'd left it on the top level. Yet, not even a shadow of it remained. In the fridge were several plastic bottles of coke and some rotting clementines. That was all. It had unexpectedly vanished. I crouched and peeked all the way to the back of the fridge, but it still wasn't there. The back of the fridge- Dude, you have a tiny-ass fridge. There is no back of the fridge that you have to crouch and peek to see. Anyway, I couldn't have overlooked it given that there wasn't much in here anyway, and it was mostly empty. Or had I just made myself think that, and in reality I'd left it sitting out. I closed the fridge and looked around the trash-strewn room. If you had left it out, it would probably already be starting to smell a little bit. At the very least, the smell of blood, potentially. You know, I mean, it's it, sure, it's only... 12-ish hours later or something, but still. I'm sure there would be some sort of smell by now. Even if it's not quite as extreme as what most people think of when they think of rotting corpse. The large cardboard box of the hand I'd been put in. What had I done with it yesterday? I had a sense that I'd tossed it into a corner of the room, but... At any rate, my memories of last night weren't very clear. Because yesterday had been more eventful than my brain capacity could handle, not to mention that each event had been a huge... or had made a huge impact on me, and I'd been out of the sorts from start to finish. Calm down. Cool your head, and try to get organized. Let's think about why the hand that had been here yesterday is gone. I started up my word processing software and began writing up a list of the various possibilities that occurred to me. Let's see. What reasons can I think of for the disappearance of the hand in my fridge? One, it was I was mistaken. I left it somewhere else in my room. Yet two, yesterday I myself took it outside and threw it away somewhere. Three, Shogun took it back. Four, in truth, the police searched my room and confiscated it. Five, the mass media broke in and stole it. Six, the hand didn't even exist in the first place. I want to note that with four, they probably would have had you under, you know police surveillance of the hospital. Like, you, they would have presumably had a, an officer outside your room or something like that to make sure you don't just waltz out once you're starting to feel better. So four doesn't seem particularly likely. My base had been unlocked ever since yesterday, so anyone could have entered without much difficulty. In fact, that was precisely why Shogun had been able to leave the hand in my room. Or was it two? I didn't have clear memories of where I left it to go to zero front. My feeling of I have to save Nanami and the fear of Shogun that came when I saw the hand, in any case, a range of emotions sp spiraled in me, filling me to the brim. I hadn't been cool-headed at all. Maybe I had unconsciously taken the hand with me when I left and had thrown it away in a trash can somewhere. Alternatively, everything about the hand had been a delusion, and in truth, it had never existed to begin with. But when I opened my email, yesterday's mail from Shogun was still there. All the stuff about his present to me and whatnot was written there, plain as day. Besides, Shogun himself had referred to the hand yesterday. I had a real hard time thinking of it as being a delusion of mine. 
What about the possibility that the police or the media had taken it? They look at otaku creeps like me with contempt, so the chances of that might be unexpectedly strong. I, I, I think it begs the question, why was the media deciding to go into your shipping container on the roof of an apartment complex? It seems a little unlikely. I was scared to go online after yesterday's events, even so, I couldn't keep from wanting to see for myself, and I opened my browser. I began up looking or I began by looking up the main news page at Taboo plus the news sites I usually frequented. As expected, there were a bunch of articles lined up about yesterday's bedlam at the pedestrian scramble. Oh, I didn't. I didn't read that top part. Oh well. I hadn't emailed the media. I'd never seen Yuri Brightman's TV show, and naturally I knew not to think about it, or I knew not a thing about him. What could it all mean? Everything had been arranged by Shogun, after all. Or what could it mean? Everything had been arranged by Shogun, after all? What for? He talked about a quest or something. But what was to be gained by pushing me to get a D-sword to the point of making the media feature me in a live broadcast? Uh, I didn't understand what Shogun wanted to do. He'd even let Nanami go with her life. I followed the links to read all kinds of articles, but not one of them touched on Shogun. There had been almost no time gap between when I barreled at Shogun and the mass media came rushing in. Even if Shogun had used that time to flee, he would without doubt have been spotted by the media. It was still more inconceivable for someone in a wheelchair, that is, Shogun, who wouldn't have been able to use his legs freely to escape the scene such a short peri to escape the scene within such a short period of time. Furthermore, I took a look round at Chan. As I'd predicted, things were going wilds in there. They repeated my real name over and over. Let's see. Wasn't that Nishijo dude's uniform from Suame? Hey, anyone in this thread a Suame student? Boys N, too stupid, lol, die you ass, lol. Chill out, Nishijo, for real. Otaka were gonna get bashed again because of you. They found out what figure he was holding. Sayer from Burachu. <laughs> Ugh. Lol, so creepy. Otaku freaks are crying over this, lol. That Nishijo guy should have just shut himself up instead of getting on TV or whatever. Seira Nishijo, you dummy, I'm gonna send you flying with my awakening rocket body blow. Already done, one of his classmates from last year came out and exposed all his personal information. It's done. They were all saying whatever the hell they wanted, taunting me without any idea of how I felt. That channel was scary when it turned against you. Shogun was to blame for this as well. That aside, I thought underground news that they couldn't show on television would get posted on at chan but i didn't spot anything of the sort nothing was going around about how there had been one more person on the roof of zero front besides me almost as though yes almost as though the person called shogun hadn't been there from the start maybe sh the shogun who appeared then had been no more than a phantom of the real shogun even if his existence were certain it was also possible that the shogun who'd been at zero front was a delusion i'd created only thing that should have been impossible, realistically speaking, kept me, or kept happening to me. It was like a game. A world where Nanami had died, and a world where she was alive. Like, the two of them stood side by side, and I had the option to pick either one. It was similar to the decision points in Naroge, the future branched infinitely. The difference between me and ordinary people was that I had delusions of the choice that leads to an unhappy outcome and could simulate the event to come. Such as an event when Nanami died, or when ISA jumped to death, or when I fell from the roof of Zero Front and died. In short, the unhappiness that visited me over and over as though someone had planned it out might in fact have been a mental trap I'd laid for myself. In the midst of a boring and unchanging everyday life, I wished to emigrate to a world as stimulating as a game, and I unconsciously showed it to myself in the form of delusions. Impossible. I didn't possess any such desire. 
At least, I'd say an instant no thanks to any simulation that would scare or sadden me. <laughs> Even all the things I was thinking of now were ultimately no more than idiotic, childish delusions. I sighed and leaned against my chair's backrest, looking distractedly up at the ceiling. Reality was... Uh, indeterminate. Everything began to appear like a lie. The world called I was so hollow. So shit, new case. ヒガイシャは江戸川区に住む十勝あやみさん、二十七歳で死因は喉を詰まらせたことによる窒息死とみられています。警察の調べによりますと、被害者の右手の肉が削り取られて骨が露出しており、また胃の中からは人間の肉
The difference in mood between those who were simply visiting Shibuya and those who lived there grew striking. The former anticipated even greater idiocy and chaos, the latter lamented Shibuya's shift toward lawlessness and advocated giving the police greater freedom to act. The sixth Nugen incident occurred as though, the, as though to mock this chain of disturbances. Naturally, the culprit remained at large. A week had passed since the day of the earthquake. I'd been suspended from school all the while. Even if they hadn't suspended me, I wouldn't have been emotionally equipped to go to school. Another new gen incident occurred the day after the earthquake. Like the time when Dr. Takashina was killed, its content made it clear that it was a kind of message aimed at me. A woman who had devoured her own right hand. Oh. Oh, we're supposed... Okay. It's supposed to be her own right hand. Okay. Well then, if it's her own right hand, would it have been suicide and homicide? Well, I, I guess her death would have to have been the homicide, and the suicide would have had to have been her eating her own hand. I'm... Yeah, that, 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 that one's a little bit off, I'm going to be honest. That secretly signified Nanami's severed right hand, no doubt about it. The thing about Nanami had just been Shogun fishing me, but I went cold when I entertained the thought that maybe she'd really been the one to die. And I'd become famous in Shibuya in the worst sense of the word, which made me more afraid than ever before to venture outdoors. If there were a hole, I wanted to crawl inside. There were days when I went without eating, because even going shopping at convenience stores was agonizing. I couldn't hold my head up and walk around outside. I constantly had the feeling that somebody was laughing at me. Other people's gazes scared me. I didn't want to meet anyone. And people who seemed like they were from the media frequently dropped by, but I ignored all of them. I hadn't contacted my parents or spoken to Nanami. I held back on playing ESO as well. There wouldn't be anything worse than if it leaked out that I was Nightheart. One week. Was this brief period of time too long or too short for things to cool down? They say that rumors last 75 days, but that's a proverb from the past. Lately, fads have been amazingly fast to change. The catch words of the moment will have been abandoned in a year. Some of the coined words that everyone uses in their net speak die out in a matter of months. On a daily basis, TV shows seek out heroes and idols and villains, milk them dry, and throw them away. It was true that even the new gen cases, now that six had occurred, people on at Chan had pretty much stopped discussing the first one. Everything disappeared from people's memories in the blink of an eye. That's why I thought about how nice it'd be if, like those sorts of hot topics, the stir about me died down within a week. Wishful thinking, but I couldn't help wishing it. My head and stomach ached. I sat down on my usual bench and calmed my heart. Whoops. Oh. Accidentally double-pressed. Uh, I said, uh, surely Sarah would say, Yep, accidentally double pressed. Or at least, well, rather, it registered two presses. I started to think, just a little, that maybe I should. I'd heard that the worsening of public order had led to an increase in Shibuya students who voluntarily left school. I thought for a while now that I didn't care much about not being able to graduate, as a matter of fact, I might as well leave school right now. Even so, I was going to school, despite shouldering a risk of encountering Yua. I finished drinking the coke I'd, brought, I'd bought from a vending machine along the way and got up from the bench. Stop fooling yourself. I didn't want to go to school, but I didn't want to quit either. Because if I quit school, I wouldn't be able to see Rimi. That's... Technically not strictly true, there's nothing stopping Rimi from just coming to your place. But sure, if you, if you quit school, you will literally never see Rimi ever again, because that's how it works. Now, because we were classmates, we would automatically meet as long as I went to school, but if that connection went away... Of course, we could make phone calls or meet face-to-face, -face, but those things required proactive behavior, and they certainly wouldn't happen automatically. And I definitely couldn't behave proactively. In fact, I hadn't seen Rimi for a while now. Even though Rimi had promised me so, I hadn't had any contact from her for over 10 days. 
when I imagined that maybe she'd seen my see me disgraced on TV and I'd fallen out of her good graces, it made me horribly frightened and sad and lonely. No one, not even Nanami, came to see me. I was slandered in massive online threads. I cowered in fear of Shogun and Yua's shadows. Though I said I didn't want to meet with anyone, that solitude was agonizing. I wanted Rimi to come take a look at me. I wanted her to say it must have been hard for you, and hold me gently. When you got down to it, I was letting her spoil me. But it was her fault. Rimi was the one who had taught me about three-dimensional warmth. After I'd known that warmth once, I'd, it made me want to reach for it again and again. I could no longer find such peace in the second dimension or in delusions. I couldn't stand it just by immersing myself in daydreams. I want to see Rimi. Okay, that was my timer that just went off, so we're going to go ahead and end this part here. And I will see you all next time, where we will be, I guess, going into our classroom, potentially meeting Rimi, and potentially dealing with a whole bunch of crap uh, from our uh, other classmates because of what happened over the last couple of parts. But I will see you all next time. Like I said, quick reminder that I do have a Discord. That is my go-to place for posting about the channel. So I do highly recommend that you go and join that if you want to know what's going on with the channel. Down in the description, you will also find links to my Patreon as well as a Streamlabs donation link. Those are the two best ways to help support the channel if you find yourself enjoying the content on the channel. Uh, Patreon takes a 5% cut, but in exchange, you're able to get early access to videos because they provide a nice, easy way of automating the uh, process of giving and revoking, uh, well, basically the ability to access uh, content. Um, so in those cases, you get early access to videos is the main thing. Streamlabs, however, doesn't really have a nice, good way of automating that process. As a result, you don't get any early access if you go that route, but the channel takes home 100% or damn near close. Um, whatever it is that you give, whether you do a one-time donation or monthly donation via Streamlabs, either way, the channel takes home a significantly larger cut compared to Patreon, who, like I said, or at least I'm pretty sure I said, take a 5% cut. Um, it's entirely up to you which one you want to go with. But that is going to be it for this video. Like I said, I will see you all next time. Until then, goodbye and farewell.